Hello and welcome to this video in which we're going to be talking about integrating third-party systems with SharePoint. My name is Dougie Wood, I'm the Creative Director here at Valto and I'm also a Microsoft MVP. The objective of today's video is we're going to start off by talking about some native integrations with SharePoint. Um, we're then going to move into talking about understanding the three options that you have when you're thinking about integrating a third party system into SharePoint, as well as any time and skills considerations or any cost implications that you might have through those three different types of integrations. And then hopefully at the end, you'll have a good understanding of all three in order to choose what is the best option for you. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is some native integrations. So SharePoint has some native integrations already inside of it, built into it, that you can integrate with third parties such as YouTube. So if you want to embed a YouTube video directly into SharePoint, it's really easy to do that. And this is what it could look like. This is just a native YouTube web part and we've embedded a video into here. Now, like with any SharePoint web parts, they are responsive, so they will fill the space that you give it. So because this is using a very small section, the thumbnail of the video is very small, whereas that if I put it into this section, it'd be much wider and it'd fill up that space. But YouTube is just one of the third party native integrations. You also got things like Twitter feeds, which is a great way of bringing social media directly into SharePoint, um, as well as Bing Maps as well. So if you wanted to put, say, your office location or a point on a map of interest into your SharePoint intranet, you can also use Bing Maps. There's also some third party, uh, well, I should say third party. They are separate to SharePoint, but they are still inside of Microsoft 365. So you've got products like Stream, which is like essentially Microsoft's answer to YouTube, where you can build out um, channels of videos, training maybe, onboarding videos, things like that you can embed directly into your intranet. You've got things like the Viva suite of products, so something like Yammer that it was formerly known as, um, I think it's now called um, Viva Communications or Chats or something like that. You can embed, embed them directly inside of SharePoint as well. You've got Microsoft Forms, so if you're wanting to do any surveys, questionnaires, polls, anything like that, you can embed those forms directly inside of your SharePoint intranet, as well as the Power Platforms. So you've got things like Canvas Power Apps, um, we'll be taking a look at later on, which you can embed directly into SharePoint, and Power BI Reports. So if you're building any kind of KPI dashboards or anything like that, you can build those directly into your SharePoint intranet as well. But as you can see from that native list, if you're looking at kind of a complete outside third party, nothing to do with Microsoft type of products, there's not that many that, that will natively integrate from SharePoint inside of things. Um, there are some products um, like Dynamics 365, uh, Salesforce, things like that, which will go the other way. They'll go from that product to SharePoint as a document management. Um, but we're, what we're mostly going to be looking at is thinking about this from the point of view of this is your intranet. And if, if it's your intranet um, that you're looking to have as the single source of truth as in the first platform that people go to and then you want to integrate to that third party then we're going to talk about some additional options for that so the first of the three options is to use navigation buttons so inside of SharePoint there's loads of different areas that you could use for navigation you've got the hub navigation bar across the top or the home navigation on the left hand side You've got the site navigation bar, which is specific to the current site that you're looking at. As well, you've got things like quick links web parts. So for example, on our screenshot here, um, we've got this is our quick links web part. Um, and we can link out to, to, to different places with that. We've also got button web parts, which is literally just a single clickable button that you could place somewhere on a page. And then you've also got the call to action web part, which just as a little demonstration, I've just put here on the right hand side, this is a call to action web part where we can change the background image, we can change the text which sits uh, over it, we can change the text of the button which is clickable, and of course we can change the hyperlink, the URL that this is then navigating to once you click on that call to action. Navigation buttons will always be the quickest way to integrate your third party system. So say like Facebook, um, there's no native Facebook web part or plug into SharePoint, um, but you could easily provide that call to action to bounce a user directly into Facebook. Um, most super users can do this themselves. So actually 
another pro of this. It's super simple, super easy to do. Um, if the link changes, it's very quick to update this uh, method. Obviously, it's all using very simple to use web parts. Um, you don't need to worry about interfacing with SharePoint looking strange in any way because you're just using a native web part, so you don't need to fiddle around with layouts and things like that. Uh, also, it's going to be the cheapest option as it requires no real configuration. Um, it's just using standard SharePoint functionality, nice and easy to set up. Um, the cons of this to consider is that it is, I suppose it, it's, it's kind of one of those catch-22s, it is very simplistic. Um, and it prevents having all the information under one roof, which basically means that you are adding an additional click to the user journey, um, that they have to go to your intranet, then they see that, then they click it, then they open it up into another um, window. So you are kind of detaching the user from the information itself. It's not automatically pulling it through. So that's the first option. The second option then we have is what we call a iframe embed. Now this is a, again um, a native web part. The, the uh, embed web part is an out of the box web part from SharePoint. It allows to embed external websites directly into SharePoint. So just to give you a, a real world example of this, on my SharePoint intranet homepage, if I scroll down, here is a embed. It's a iframe of a SharePoint calendar directly inside of um, a page. Now, the reason I show you this is because I've actually seen a lot of my clients previously, um, when they've designed SharePoint pages themselves, do this. Um, actually get a SharePoint calendar and embed it into the page. Um, now, as you can see from here, though, there's a couple of problems. We've got a couple of scroll bars on the page, which isn't great, doesn't look amazing. And also, um, because it is an iframe, meaning you're basically embedding a web page within a web page, um, you also end up with like the navigation bar of the site across the top and SharePoint up here, and you're not getting just the calendar appear in there, um, which isn't great. Now, obviously, this is because I'm embedding a SharePoint page. Um, um, it might be different if you were to find another third-party app that is designed for iframing, so it gets rid of all the noise um, around the edges and it just shows you uh, the content in the middle of the page that you wanted to see. But it's very much down to the third party at that point, whatever the web page is designed to display inside of uh, an iframe. So pros and cons of this. So the pros are it doesn't take very long to set up. There's, there's a small amount of configuration, and it's always useful if you do understand a bit about HTML. Um, as I say, it is a native web part to add the embed web part to SharePoint. Um, but knowing a bit about um, HTML is always useful. There is a free website called W3Schools, which is really useful for anything related to um, HTML. If you're trying to figure out how embeds and things like that work, go and check out that website because it's really useful and get you started with that. Um, the cons of this is the main concern with this approach is that the way it will display on the page. So as we saw in my example before, um, the embed could add additional scroll bars within itself and make the user experience of the page a bit clunky, difficult, and just doesn't look quite right. Things don't tend to align perfectly on the page. Um, you likely need a certain level of consultancy for, from a Microsoft partner, such as Valto, just to put our name there, um, just to check out whether or there is going to be any issues with this. So sometimes it's not even just the layout options, um, but it's also things like authentication, making sure that actually the user can see the web part, uh, the, the, the website at the end point, because again, it, it's, it's very... <laughs> It can be very difficult um, sometimes to kind of figure out how the authentication is going to work. So a level of consultancy around that is always going to be useful. Um, and also some small costs involved for consultancy or time configuring this web part. So it's not as straightforward as the first option of the navigation. Um, as I say, it's probably worth if you're going down these kind of routes to maybe consider reaching out to a partner like Valto just to sense check what you're doing and if there's any pitfalls that we can spot um, that, that you might fall into with whatever chosen option you, you pick. So that's the second option. And then the third option we've got is the bespoke code solution. So what I mean by this is that we're going down the pro code route. So we're going to be building out a bespoke solution specifically for your requirements. Now, 
in this category, I've broken this down into three key areas because bespoke, uh, bespoke solutions, they are going to be um, very specific to how you want to integrate that third party. So the first option that we have is what I would refer to as a power automate integration, which we're basically just talking about it being a data integration. You're pushing and pulling data from a third party. So let's say, for example, you're wanting to, um, every time a new record is added into Salesforce, um, you want to bring that into a SharePoint list to be able to display it inside of SharePoint. You could use Power Automate to do that. The push-pull of data can be done with Power Automate. However, as I've put there, you do need to then think about what the interface will be. Power Automate in itself is just pulling and pushing data, but you could use that to integrate into a SharePoint interface. So whether it be that you are creating a page of content in SharePoint, you're creating a Word document, Excel document, and, and hosting in SharePoint, whether it be you're putting the data into a SharePoint list and then displaying that in a SharePoint site. There's loads of different ways you could use SharePoint as the interface for that. If you wanted to go over and above what SharePoint offers natively out of the box for an interface though, then you need to be considering point two and three on that list there. The first being SPFX, which is a um, is basically the ability to build your own web parts. So when we've talked about things like call to action web parts um, and button web parts, quick links web parts, those are all native. But if you wanted to build your own web part completely from scratch, then SPFX would be the way to go. This is a pro code framework, meaning that it's basically using um, JavaScript type libraries um, to build out your own um, functionality web parts which plug directly into SharePoint so that way if you are pushing and pulling data from different places you can display it however you like however you want it to show up um, and then the third option in that kind of category as well is thinking about Canvas Power Apps. So again, if you're wanting to build out um, a data integration using Power Automate, but you want to display that data in a nice way, um, and you don't want to go down the route of SPFX, which is pro code, then you can use a low code framework, which is Canvas Power Apps, which is essentially a way of building out a web part um, using Power Apps. Power Apps, if you're not familiar with it, there's tons of content and materials out there, so go check that out first. But it's basically like building out an app using an interface a bit like a PowerPoint deck almost, using low code, which is like Excel formulas, to then build out an interface. So an example of this might be on the right-hand side here, where I've got the ability to select a, um, a date to book out a, uh, a, a desk. So... Nowadays, while we're hybrid working, there's people working from home and they're working from the office. It's very popular now to have a desk booking system so you can book a desk when you go back into the office and you could embed that using something like this is a Canvas app that we've built directly into your intranet so that people can book out those um, desks from home on a day they're working from home for the, maybe the next day when they're going to be in the office. So that's using a Canvas app. So this is, as I said, the, the, the pros and cons of creating some form of bespoke solution, whether it's using Power Automate, SPFX, Power Apps, or, or any other kind of method. Um, the pros of this is that you will be able to have a fully integrated with your choice of third party, and you can really define exactly how you want this to work because you, you're, you're fully starting this from scratch. Um, the options truly are limitless. You can build a truly seamless experience from your SharePoint intranet all the way through to your third-party websites or application um, and display that data in any way, shape, or form uh, that you like. The cons of this approach is that um, it is going to be the most costly option of the three, significantly more than the first two, because you are basically employing a team to build out a custom solution, whether it's internally, your own kind of development team, or you're reaching out to a Microsoft partner like Valto um, to build that solution for you. It's going to take a lot of time and cost to get to that point. If you're asking right now, how long is it going to take? How much cost is it going to be? That's a question which is like, how long is a piece of string? Because it really depends on what it is you're looking to do. It could be something very simplistic, like just doing a simple data call and bringing something back instantly. Say, for example, if it was going and getting the latest weather forecast and bringing that back, it could be a very simple kind of request. 
but then you start thinking about what's the interface how do you want to show that back but it, again it could be something even more complicated than that like a booking system or something like that which again is going to be much more than a simple kind of call to get data and display it so if you've got any questions about that feel free to contact us um, and we can help you um, through that journey um, so yeah that, that that's basically the, the final option that you've got there if you're interested in integrating your SharePoint intranet with a third party, then do reach out to us today. You can email us at hello at valto.co.uk and we're more than happy to talk to you about what options you've got on the table. We offer loads of different services. So um, the most relevant to this would be a SharePoint intranet, SharePoint intranet workshop in which we're going to talk to you about how you're using an intranet or what you would like to get out of an intranet. And as part of that, we can talk about integrating third-party systems and applications into that intranet. However, we also offer other services as well that I should mention, things like Power Apps Development Workshops. So Maybe it's not necessarily directly related to an intranet, but you are thinking about building out an application and you want an interface for that. We can talk to you about that through our Power Apps Development Workshop. And we also have plenty other um, workshops which relate to intranet. So things like security hardening, making sure that all your data is secure and governed, retention uh, and sensitivity. Again, making sure your, your data goes through proper retention processes and that it's properly secure um, and it has sensitivity labels assigned to it so only the relevant people can see it. We've got things like tenant to tenant migrations, SharePoint migrations, any of those types of things. Reach out and talk to us today. Thank you very much for your time watching today's video. If you've got any questions at all, please use the comments feed below. If you've not already, please subscribe to our channel for future videos, like this video. And as I say, if you've got any questions or you would like to get some support, email us at hello at valto.co.uk and we'll reach out to you today. Thank you very much.